Nenda kamuite mumeo uje naye hapa yule mwanamke akajibu akasema sina mume Yesu akamwambia umesema vema sina mume kwa maana umekuwa na waume wa watano naye e, uliye naye sasa siye mume wako hapo umesema kweli yule mwanamke akamwambia Bwana naona ya kuwa u, un, u nabii baba zetu waliabudu katika mlima huu nanyi husema ya kwamba huko Yerusalemu ni mahali patupasapo kuabudia haleluya haleluya i want to know that there was a great purpose for Jesus coming to reconcile man back again to God nataka ujue ya kwamba kulikuwa na kusudi kubwa kwa kuja kwake Yesu ili akaweze kuturudisha kwa Mungu when you begin to read Ezekiel chapter 28 ukianza kusoma Ezekiel mlango wa 28 it will give you clarity on a need that was there for men to be reconciled back again to god itakuonyesha kwa wazi ile hitaji ambalo lilikuwa ili mwanadamu akaweze kurejeshwa kwa mungu because men kwa sababu wanadamu was supposed to be created walikuwa wanafaa kuumbwa and come and replace a vacuum that was left by Lucifer in heaven. Na kuja kujaza lile pengo ambalo liliachwa na Lucifer kule mbinguni. I want you to know that the devil was an angel. Nataka ujue ya kwamba shetani alikuwa malaika. That led worship in heaven. Baye aliongoza kuabudu ama ibada kule mbinguni. And he was a great angel equipped by God with everything that he needed to do great worship in heaven. Na alikuwa malaika kuu ambaye alikuwa amepewa kila kitu ili akaweze kufanya ibada kuu kule mbinguni. When you read Ezekiel 28 you begin to see that the devil was like music himself. Ukianza kusoma Ezekiel mlango wa 28 utaanza kuona ya kwamba shetani alikuwa kama muziki yeye mwenyewe. You will read there and get to see how he was equipped with equipments ukisoma pale utaanza kuona ya kwamba yeye alikuwa amepewa kila chombo he had tambourines on himself he had tambourines all these sweet you know uh, equipments to make music great in heaven alikuwa na matam, eh, eh, tam, tambourines alikuwa na kila chombo ambacho kilikuwa kinafanya muziki ikuwe kuu kule mbinguni his assignment yani and, and reason for his creation was to lead worship in the presence of God in heaven. Kazi yake na jukumu yake ili akaweze kuumbwa ilikuwa kuongoza ibada kule mbinguni mbele za Mungu. So the devil was there before men. Kwa hivyo shetani alikuwa kabla ya wanadamu. And as he continued to lead worship. Na wakati aliendelea kuongoza ibada. When you read Ezekiel 28. Ukisoma Ezekiel mlango wa 28 through revelation that was given to Ezekiel kupitia ile ufunuo ambaye Ezekiel alipewa you begin to see with understanding exactly what happened utaanza kuona kwa kuelewa kile kitu ambacho kilifanyika the iniquity that came in the heart of the enemy yani ile uovu eh, ambaye iliingia ndani ya ule adui is what affected what he was doing in heaven in the presence of God. Nikile ambacho kiliweza kuadhiri kile alikuwa anafanya mbinguni mbele za Mungu. This angel Lucifer the devil was so close to God than any other angel in heaven. Huyu malaika ambaye ni Lucifer alikuwa karibu sana na Mungu kuliko malaika mwingine kule mbinguni. And he was leading great worship. Na yeye alikuwa anaongoza kuabudu ambaye ilikuwa kuu. And when you read there you begin to see that God was excited about what he was doing. Na ukianza kusoma pale utaona ya kwamba Mungu alikuwa anafurahia kile alikuwa anafanya. And God says he was faithful to his assignment. Na Mungu anasema ya kwamba yeye alikuwa mwaminifu katika ile jukumu yake. Until when evil came in the heart and changed the agenda of God. Hadi ile ubaya ilipoingia ndani 
hakukuwa na chaguo lingine other than to pick the devil and throw him out of heaven ila kuchukua ule shetani na kumchukua na kumtupa nje ya mbinguni and when you read the genesis 1 verse 2 there you begin to see where the devil was thrown and he was just loitering all around he didn't have anywhere to go ukianza kusoma mwanzo mlango wa kwanza utaona mahali shetani alikuwa ametupwa na alikuwa anasunguka ama anasurura kila mahali kwa sababu hakukuwa na mahali pengine pa kwenda in fact now heaven there was a vacuum yani kule mbinguni kulikuwa na pengo because the only people that remained there were 24 elders kwa sababu wale walibakia pale tu ni wazee 24 who didn't have the capacity to lead the worship that God demanded ambao hawakuwa na ile uwezo ya kuweza kuongoza ile ibada yenye Mungu alitaka so in the wisdom of God kwa hivyo kupitia hekima ya Mungu he had to create something else yeye ilikuwa inabidi aumbe kitu kingine that will come and give him the worship in the same dimension yenye ingekuja kuweza kupeana ile ibada katika ile kiwango just like the devil was created kama vile shetani aliumbwa now god had to come with an idea in his wisdom mungu pia kupitia hekima yake tena to create another image alikuja kuweza kuumba kumbo nyingine that will come and do what the devil was doing in heaven yenye angekuja kufanya kile shetani alikuwa anafanya kule mbinguni when you read Ezekiel 28 you begin to see the devil was created and man was created ukianza kusoma Ezekiel 28 utaona shetani aliumbwa na pia mwanadamu akaumbwa so god created man kwa hivyo mungu aliumba mwanadamu with a purpose akiwa na kusudi of coming to do what the devil was doing in heaven ya kuweza kujua kile shetani alikuwa anafanya kule mbinguni so that's why jesus is telling the woman in samaria ndio maana yesu anamwambia mwanamke msamaria my agenda for coming ya kwamba agenda yangu ama kusudi yangu ya kuja for a people ni kuweza kutafuta that watu will worship god ambao wataabudu mungu in truth and in spirit kwa kweli na kwa roho because there was a vacuum kwa sababu kulikuwa na and i want you to know nataka ujue the purpose of god kusudi la mungu delivering you ya kukukomboa is to worship him ni kuweza kumwabudu kwa ukweli and in spirit na kwa roho you are supposed to give god unafaa kupatia mungu what the angel that was thrown out who is the enemy was doing in heaven kile yule malaika alitupwa ambaye ni adui alikuwa anafanya kule mbinguni and that's why god created uh, you know darkness and light ndio maana mungu aliumba giza na mwangaza and you can see the different in our timings na unaweza kuona utofauti katika majira yetu when it is day here we are worshiping god yani ikiwa mchana hapa tunaabudu mungu when it is night here ikiwa usiku hapa the other side of the world uh, ule upande mwingine wa dunia we are worshiping god wanaabudu mungu you are created wewe uliumbwa to worship kuweza kuabudu and when you do worship na ukiabudu you will begin to access blessings wewe utaanza kupata baraka just like the way the devil was blessed kama vile shetani alikuwa amebarikiwa just like the way the devil was glorified kama vile shetani alikuwa ametukuswa when you worship god ukiabudu mungu and occupy that vacuum na ukaweza kujaza lile pengo and please god na kupendeza mungu god will bless you to the overflowing Mungu atakubariki hadi ifurike. So when we come here on a Sunday, kwa hivyo tukikuja mahali hapa kama Jumapili, we are coming to do something that is very important. Tunakuja kufanya kitu ambacho ni muhimu sana. That there is no other person that can do it before God other than you and me. Ya kwamba hakuna mtu mwingine anayeweza kufanya mbele za Mungu ila wewe na mimi. So when we say we are jumping, kwa hivyo tukisema tunaruka, jump with understanding don't swing ruka ukiwa na ufunuo waja we are doing something tunafanya kitu that lucifer was doing lucifer was even flying yenye shetani alikuwa anafanya hata alikuwa anapaa look you'll understand ezekiel 28 and read there utaelewa mlango wa 28 ezekiel na usoma how lucifer was flying in heaven na utaona vile lucifer alikuwa anapaa kule mbinguni so when you praise god kwa hivyo ukisifu mungu praise with understanding sifu ukiwa unaelewa when we say we are jumping tukisema tunaruka stop swinging wacha kuweza kuninginia hivyo unaninginia stop swinging wacha kuweza kwenda hivyo unaenda hivyo wacha kwenda hivyo na kuinuka na kuinuka or dragging your 
feet. Like someone is forcing you to do it. This is why you are created. To know what Lucifer was doing in heaven. That is why Jesus came. So from today, when you worship, worship with understanding. That is that is the purpose. Why Jesus came. To look for people that will worship God in truth and in spirit. Because the devil was worshiping in truth and in spirit until when he changed. So how many are saying from today we begin to worship with understanding? When you begin to say you are great. Your mind. You are the only one that deserves our praise. I'm telling you the truth. That pleases God. That is what God needs. That is what God feeds on. And when you do it with understanding, God will come down regardless of where you are. That is what Silas and, and Paul did in prison. When they were put in prison, they began to do praise and worship with understanding. The Bible says at midnight, they started praising and worshiping. And as they were praying and worshiping and praising, God came and joined them. If you want God to give you company in the journey of life, know from today that you are created to worship God. That is why God is a jealous God. When you begin to worship anything else, when you begin to worship Mercedes Benz, when you begin to worship money, when you begin to worship other things, you will get trouble with God. Because he wants you to prioritize the agenda of God. The plan of God was for you to worship him and fill up that vacuum that was left by Lucifer when he was thrown out of heaven. So how many are saying we need to change the way we have been worshiping? You know some of you are worshiping and your mind is in Kitale. Unatua maindi. Wengine wanabudu mawazo ikiwa Kitale munakongoa maindi. Some of you are worshiping na unarudishia mtu change githurai. You need to you need to change. Wengine wenyu munabudu kama munarudisha change kule githurai. Munaitaji kubadilika. And know that this is serious kingdom business. Na ujue ya kwa maini kasi ya ufalme ambayo ina maanisha. You need to worship with understanding. Unafaa kwa budu kama unaelewa. And worship God focused. Na kwa budu mungu ukiwa na mtazamo. And when you do that. Na ukifanya hivyo. All the good things that you need in life. Mambo mazuri yote unaitati katika maisha. Will come your way. Itakuja kwa njia yako. Because the father is pleased with the people. Kwa sababu baba anapendezo na watu. That know how to worship him. One of the reasons why David did very well is because he had a revelation on what it means to praise the living God. That's why he said I was happy when they said unto me let us go to the house of God. And when he came to the house of God before he got there he did it with praises. No wonder Goliath could not stand before him. No wonder the Jebusites as strong as they were could not manage him. Because he had a sacred weapon of praising and worshipping the living God. God is pleased with the people that praise and worship him. So when we are saying you are great and you deserve our praises, 
kifa zetu do it with understanding fanya ukiwa unaelewa and do it from the heart na ufanye kutoka ndani ya moyo some people are just doing it from the mouth watu wengi wanafanya tu kwa mdomo and you can tell that na unaweza sema hivyo with the body language yani na ile lugha ya mwili Now the synagogues were 
empty. Kwa hivyo masinagogi ilikosa watu. And so the Pharisees started feeling jealous. Kwa hivyo mafarisayo wakaanza kuhisi wivu. And that's why they are putting pressure to Jesus to leave Judea. Ndio maana wanamsukuma Yesu akaweza kutoka Judea. Because kwa sababu all the way all since the creation of the beginning of the world. Tangu ulimwengu kuumbwa. There are some people that cannot stomach. Kuna watu ambao hawawezi stahimili. God blessing you. Mungu akikubariki. Your enemies will not stomach. Yaani maadui zako hawawezi stahimili. What God is doing in your life. Kile Mungu anafanya katika maisha yako. And I want you to know you have enemies. Na mimi nataka ujue uko na maadui. Stop saying everybody loves me since Wacha when. Wacha kusema ya kwamba hata kila mtu ananipenda tangu lini. Are you better than Jesus? Kwani wewe ni bora kuliko Yesu? Yeah, you know I have 5000 friends. Ah, unajua katika Facebook mimi niko na marafiki 5000. In fact me bishop everybody loves me yeah. I don't have enemies Askofu mimi sina adui kila mtu ananipenda Let me tell you the truth Wacha nikwambie ukweli There are people who will not stomach Kuna watu ambao hawawezi stahimili What God is doing in your life Kile Mungu anafanya katika maisha yako And they are jealous Yaani wako na wivu Hallelujah Hallelujah They are jealous Wako na wivu That is why it's not wisdom for you Ndio maana si hekima kwako broadcasting everything that you are doing in your life wende kutangaza kila kitu ambacho unafanya katika maisha yako learn how at least to keep your cool jifunze kuweka siri zako not everything to tiktok sio kila kitu uko kwa tiktok uko instagram facebook uko facebook i'm now heading to this i'm hey, now doing sasa this sasa mimi naelekea hii sasa mimi nafanya hii i'm now enjoying life hey, we sasa mimi nafurahia maisha we tuko na wewe utatuambia ukipiga nduru uko na madui you don't have to expose everything that you're doing sio lazima ufunue kila kitu ambacho unafanya and this generation is in a competition to expose what na. they are doing you can almost get updates for what people are doing out there na hiki kisasi ni kama wanashindana kuweza kuonyeshana kile wanafanya on my way to this eh hey, niko njiani mwangu nikifanya hii i just received a new phone hey, look ni, at ni this me, the ni blessings nimepata nimepata simu mpya hii oh, ni this is what the lord is doing eh hey, hivi ndivyo bwana anafanya i'm enjoying life eh hey, na maisha you will be hit by forces wewe utagongwa na nguvu that operate in the heaven in the heaven area ambazo zinafanya kazi katika himaya za kiroho bible says we don't fight against flesh and blood biblia inasema kwamba hatupigani kwa damu na nyama fight against governments lakini tunapigana na maserikali and principalities na hata makuu and forces na hata eh, nguvu that the devil has set in the heavenly realm ambazo shetani ameweka katika himaya za kiroho you don't go broadcasting hauendi ukitangaza everything kila kitu on social media katika eh, 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 kule social media the pharisees could not stomach god blessing jesus mafarisayo hawangestahimili mungu akibariki yesu so they must have minded a plan kwa hivyo wakatengeneza njama on how to eliminate jesus ya kuweza kumtoa yesu the good side of the story is god will never stop what he's doing because someone is jealous about manifestations of god's blessings hadithi nzuri ni kwamba Mungu hatakosa ama hatakoma kudhihirisha kile ambacho amepangia mwanadamu. So based on this pressure Jesus is leaving Judea and is on his way to Galilee back again to his home base. Kulingana na hii msukumo Yesu ako njiani mwake akiwa anaelekea Judea ambayo ilikuwa kwao. Tell you neighbor it's always good to have a base. Mwambie mwanzako ni vyema kila wakati kukua na mahali ambapo unasimama. It's always good to have a base. Mwambie ni vyema kukua na mahali ambapo unasimamia. Because at times things can become so bad. Kwa sababu wakati mwingine mambo yanaweza haribika sana. How many of you know that we don't have good seasons all the time? Ni wangapi wanajua ya kwamba hatuna majira ambazo ni mzuri kila wakati? How many of you know that this journey of life ni wangapi wanajua hii safari ya maisha? It's not always sweet every now and then. Sio tamu kila wakati. Let me tell you life is not like what we see on Facebook and Wa- Instagram. Wacha nikwambie maisha sio vile tunaonanga kwa Facebook na Instagram. I wish it was like that. Natamani ingekuwa hivyo. The reality is ukweli ndio hii. There are times in life Wa- kuna wakati katika maisha when life becomes very difficult. Bayo maisha inakuwa ngumu sana. When you're going through a season of pain. Wakati unapitia mshimo wa utumbo. When you're going through a season of discouragement. Wakati 
Bibi akimbia tena kule Galilaya. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you hear there was a need for Jesus. Ndio maana unasikia ya kwamba kulikuwa na hitaji kwake Yesu. And it was urgent. Na ilikuwa ya dharura. There are times when he need urgent help. Yaani kuna wakati unahitaji msaada wa dharura. When you hear people saying they are making emergency prayers, <laughs> don't joke with them. It is emergency. Ukisikia watu wakisema ya kwamba nafanya maombi ya dharura, usicheze na wao. Kweli kuna dharura. When you hear someone saying as I approach the seat of throne, this is emergency. <laughs> Ukisikia mtu akisema ya kwamba naenda kwenye kiti cha enzi, hii ni dharura. Jesus needed help right away. Yesu alikuwa anahitaji msaada wa hapo na hapo because he was tired. Kwa sababu alikuwa amechoka. He was exhausted. Yeye alikuwa amechoka. He was opposed by the Pharisees. Alikuwa amepingwa na mafarisayo. Who were jealous about what God was doing. Bao walikuwa na wifu ya kile Mungu alikuwa anafanya. And he knew when to run away and when to stand. Na alikuwa anajua wakati wa kutoroka na wakati wa kusimama. So this time is going to run away. Kwa hivyo hii siku ilibidi atoroke. He was in Judea. Alikuwa Judea? Then this is Samaria. Na kulikuwa Samaria? Then this is Galilee. Na kuna pia Galilee. Galilee. How do you know there are forces that are always fight you so that you don't access your place? Ni wangapi wanajua kwamba kuna nguvu ambazo kila wakati zinapigana na wewe ili usipate baraka zako? They used to come this way because they believed if you pass through Samaria you will be contaminated. Walikuwa wanaamini ya kwamba ukipitia Samaria wewe utachafuliwa. So the Pharisees would rather take a long route. Kwa hivyo mafarisayo ilikuwa inabidi wachukue safari ndefu. Or if they have to go through ama kama watapitia they would survive the, it was short but they would raise their garments like this. Ilikuwa gowns. Fu, ilikuwa fupi lakini walikuwa ilikuwa inabidi wainue mavazi vyao. So that it doesn't touch Samaria soil. Ili isiguse mchanga wa Samaria. Because they believe those are terrible sinners. Kwa sababu walikuwa naamini wa Samaria ni waovu mbaya sana. You know there are some people who are professors in an, in in measuring sin. They can tell you who is holy and who is not holy. <laughs> Unajua kuna watu ambao ni, ni maprofesa kwa kuweza kupima viwango vya dhambi. Wataweza kukuambia huyu ni mtakatifu sana ama huyu ni mwenye dhambi sana. They have PhDs. Yaani wako na ile ile chapter cha PhD. To determine how holy you are and how Kuweza kubainisha we ni mtakatifu kiwango gani na wewe ni mwenye dhambi kiwango gani? Did you know the best holiness you can do is filthy rags in the presence of God? Unajua ile utakatifu bora ambao unaweza fanya mbele za Mungu ni mavazi ambazo ni tambara. We are only justified not by our own holiness and I'm not telling you now to go rowdy. <laughs> doing crazy stuff but we are only justified in the presence of God when we access the blood of Jesus. Sisi tunafanyika wenye haki mbele za Mungu tukiweza tu kupata damu ya Yesu na sijakwambia uende sasa usurure ufanye tabia mbaya. And that's why we have a problem because you mana, will see some people that are not very good getting blessed. Ndio maana tuko na shida kwa sababu utaona watu ambao si wazuri sana wakibarikiwa. And you keep wondering is God fair? Na utashangaa kwani Mungu anapendelea The Bible says there was a need for Jesus to go through Samaria. Biblia inasema ya kwamba kulikuwa na hitaji Yesu akaweza kupitia Samaria. Even the people that you think are so bad hata wale watu ambao unaweza fikiria ni wabaya sana na hata ni waovu sana. I want you to know they are in the agenda of God. Nataka nikwambie kuna agenda ya Mungu. That God loves them and he has a plan for them. Ya kwamba Mungu anawapenda na ako na mpango mzuri juu yao. If it was not so Jesus could not have gone through Samaria that was considered evil. Kama haingekuwa hivyo, Yesu hangepitia Samaria ambayo ilikuwa imesemekana ni wenye dhambi sana. And that's why Jesus was saying. Ndio maana Yesu akasema, sacrifice 99 that are good and go for this one that is bad. Wacha wale ambao ni 99 wazuri na uende ukatafute yule mmoja ambaye amepotea. And this is exactly what Jesus will do. Na hivi ndivyo Yesu anafanya. He will go to a people in Samaria. Ataendea watu kule Samaria. That are just down they are struggling. Ambao wako pale chini wakingangana. Jesus never went to the king of Samaria. Yesu 
Yesu alipenda kutumia watu ambao wamepata madhara ndani ya mioyo. They do better. Wanafanya vyema. If you ask Ruto have you been hurt? Ukiuliza Ruto wewe umepata madhara? You already have the answer. Eh hapo hapo na jibu tayari. Has he been hurt? Yes. Je, yeye yeah, ameumizwa? Ni kweli? There is no way God will come and give you a blessing on a silver platter. Hakuna vile Mungu atakupatia baraka kwa sahani. God likes to use people who have gone through something. Mungu anapenda kutumia watu ambao wamepitia kitu. Who have gone through pain. Ambao wamepitia uchungu. So if you are in pain right now, know it's part of the process. Kwa hivyo kama uko na uchungu sasa hivi, ujue hiyo ndio safari. Regardless of how you got yourself in that pain, it's part of the process. Haijalishi vile ulijipata katika ile uchungu, lakini hiyo ndio kazi ya Mungu. So heaven will begin to focus on this woman. Kwa hivyo mbingu ikaanza kuwa na mtazamo na huyu mwanamke. And it tells you na inakwambia you will never be disqualified. Hautawahi tolewa in the plans of heaven. Katika mipango ya mbinguni. You will never. Wewe hautatolewa kwa mipango ya mbinguni. Hauwezi tolewa. Why you cannot be disqualified? Kwa nini hautatolewa? Wewe hata hujakuwa na wanaume watatu. Atmos maybe 2 3 1 confused. Labda wawili, tatu ama moja ambaye amechanganyikiwa. Lakini sidhani kama umefika kiwango ya sita. How many of you have had six? I don't think so. Ni wangapi wamekuwa na sita? Six will be too much. Eh sita ni wengi sana. If Jesus focused. Kama Yesu alikuwa na mtazamo. On this woman. Kwa ule mwanamke. Who had six? Ambaye alikuwa na sita and he was ready for the seventh na alikuwa tayari apata wa saba i'm telling you the truth nakwambia ukweli tell your neighbor amen for the plan of god amen mwambie mwenzako niko ndani ya mpango wa mungu amen tell tell that niko person amen niko ndani niko ndani in the plan of god niko ndani ya mpango wa mungu i'm in the plan of god niko ndani ya mpango wa mungu even if you had eight it's not far away from six hata you kama, are in the plan of god hata kama umekuwa na wanane sio mbali sana na sita bado uko katika mpango wa mungu i want to encourage you that you are the focus of Nataka nikutie moyo ya kwamba wewe ni mtazamo wako. Wewe ambao unahisi haustahili. Grace will locate you very soon. Neema itakupata hivi karibuni. And pick you up. Na ikuinue. And restore you. Na ikurejeshe. And get you to who you are supposed to be. Na ikupatie uh, yule mtu ambaye unastahili kuwa. What surprises me about this woman even as bad as he, she was with men she was still a worshiper going to church kile kitu ambacho kinanishangaza na huyu mwanamke hata kama alikuwa mbaya na wanaume bado walikuwa naenda kanisani and you can see her engagement with jesus was in the same level na unaweza ona vile walikuwa naongea na yesu walikuwa kwa kiwango moja when jesus switches to worship she's there wakati yesu ameweza kubadilisha maongeo juu ya ya, ya, ya kuabudu bado wako pale and she was ready na alikuwa tayari to defend what she believed in uweza kutetea kile ambacho alikuwa naamini no wonder she became a pick of jesus ndio maana yesu aliweza kumchukua she was hated in that village yeye alikuwa anachukiwa katika ile kijiji nobody trusted her hakuna mtu alimwamini can you tell your neighbor you can be trusted again mwambie mwanzako unaweza amini tena you can be trusted again unaweza amini tena you can be happy again unaweza furahia tena you can be rich again unaweza tajirika tena i'm telling you nakwambia you can go to a season where you have a lot of money and all of a sudden you don't have unaweza enda katika msimu uko na pesa nyingi na kidogo unakosa and at times the devil tells you it's over na saa zingine shetani anakwambia imeisha but i can tell you god gives people chances lakini naweza kukwambia mungu anapeana nafasi kwa watu god can give you another chance mungu anaweza kukupatia nafasi you have no idea what god is cooking up for you in heaven wewe hauna wazo na kile mungu anakupikia but i can tell you it's a great plan lakini naweza kukwambia ni mpango mtu give your future uweza kukupatia hatima don't come to a point where you throw in the towel usifike mahali ambapo unakata tamaa this woman decided never to give up in life huyu mwanamke aliamua kutokata tamaa katika maisha and you can see what she said she's been that you know every time you come to the presence of god kila wakati unapokuja kwenye uwepo wa mungu god will place a demand mungu ata, ataweka hitaji on what you're supposed to give ya kile ambacho unastahili kupea the woman came to the presence of jesus yule mwanamke alikuja kwenye uwepo wa Yesu. And Jesus put a demand. Na Yesu akaweka hitaji. And said, "Give me a drink." Na akamwambia, "Nipe kinywa chako." So when you come to the house of God. Kwa hivyo ukikuja kwa nyumba ya Mungu. God will always put a demand. Mungu kila wakati ataweka hitaji. If you will access the greatness that God has for you. Kama unaweza jua ile ukuu Mungu amekuwekea. You will have to know why did I come to Hillside. Lazima ujue ni kwa nini nilikuja Hillside. What is God demanding from me in Mungu, Hillside? Mungu anahitaji nini kutoka kwa Mungu? Why am I in Hillside? Kwa nini niko Hillside? The moment you know what Jesus demands. Punde tu unapojua kile Yesu anahitaji. And you do it. Na ufanye. I'm telling you the 
huko hapa There are some people who are here to support the ministry Na kuna watu ambao wako hapa kusimama na huduma They are supposed to to stand with the ministry in the area of finances Wanafaa kusimama na huduma katika eneo ya kifedha And they know Na wanajua If you ask them are you here for finances Yes I'm here for finances Yaani ukiwauliza watakwambia eh niko hapa kwa ajili ya But as them since you came how is your record they have no idea Lakini waulize tangu ukuje record yako iko wapi hata hawana wazo There are some people who are here to do praise and worship like these ones Eh kuna watu ambao wako hapa kufanya sifa na kuabudu kama hawa You don't expect Joroge to come and lead worship and praise here Hautarajii Joroge akuje hapa atuongoze kwa sifa na kuabudu You deserve it he doesn't have that Yeah hana hiyo You you don't expect that Hautarajii hiyo You don't expect that Hautarajii hiyo There are some people who are here because there is a demand Yaani kuna watu wako hapa kwa sababu kuna hitaji for you to serve kwa kwa wewe kutumika but when you are just idle lakini wakati wamekaa bure you will never access you know rest yani hautawahi patana na ile pumziko jesus is telling this woman yesu anamwambia huyu mwanamke if you give me what i need from you ukinipatia kile ambacho ninahitaji kutoka kwako i will give you rest nitakupatia pumziko you will not be coming here every day hautakuwa unakuja hapa kila siku people who will give their demands watu ambao wanapeana hitaji yao na kuambia ukweli they will be given rest watapewa pumziko may you receive rest as you Pokea do your pumziko demand. unapofanya hivyo rest in area of finance yani kupumzika katika eneo ya kifedha rest in destination yani kupumzika katika eneo ya hatima There are some people who are restless. Kuna watu ambao hawana pumziko. Even the way they are walking they are restless. Kuna uh, yani hata vile wanatembea hawana pumziko. Even when they are sleeping they are restless. They are gwararing everywhere. They, they, they don't have peace. Hata wakilala hawana pumziko, wanagwarana usiku nzima, hawana amani. The man is done. Lakini hitaji ikipeanwa. You do it. Na ufanye. God will give you rest. Mungu atakupatia pumziko. Jesus is telling this woman, give me Yesu anamwambia huyu mwanamke Nipatie kila ambacho ninahitaji na nitakupatia kitu na hautakuwa unakuja hapa kila siku nitakupatia pumziko so kwa hivyo kusema kwamba nafunga siku tatu nikaweza kukuwa na amani hiyo ni bure after the fasting is when you become more wild know the demand of god yani baada hata ya kufunga ndio inakuwa mbaya zaidi lakini jua hitaji ya mungu what are you called to do wewe umeitwa kufanya nini if you do it ukifanya you will not be coming every day wewe hautakuwa unakuja kila siku kuchota imani tell you but you will come every day you will come every day mwambie mwanzako hautakuwa unakuja kila siku there are people who are struggling kuna watu ambao wanangangana they live in struggle they are never happy yani hawana furaha wanangangana kila wakati that's why the leader of the praise and worship is asking people hamjakunywa chai hapo nyuma hamku kula asubuhi because it is exactly like they are they are like that wako hivyo they are never happy yani hawana furaha why kwa nini because they are tired sababu wamechoka i want to give you a secret that will give you rest nataka nikupatie siri yenye itakupatia pumziko know your demand jua hitaji lako what are you supposed to do ni nini unafaa kufanya the moment you do it ukifanya you will have rest wewe utapumzika you will not have seven men yani hautakuwa na wanaume saba you will only have one utakuwa na mmoja you will not have seven women hautakuwa na wanawake saba you will only have one utakuwa na mmoja because god will give you rest kwa sababu mungu atakupatia pumziko but if you don't know what you're supposed to do lakini kama hujui kile unapaswa kufanya you will keep on coming when the sun is too hot utakuwa unakuja kila wakati wakati jua limesimama na utachoka the woman say to jesus give me yule mwanamke akamwambia yesu nipe i agree draw the water mimi nimekubali chota maji i don't even know how you're going to do it but i'm ready to draw the water utafanya namna gani lakini chota i'm tired of coming mimi nimechoka kuja i'm tired nimechoka i'm tired nimechoka i need rest nahitaji kupumzika that's what god was telling her so when you become restless na hivyo ndivyo mungu alikuwa anaambia esau wakati utaacha kukusumbuka wewe utavunja ile nira when you are tired wakati umechoka and you come and tell god na ukuje na umwambie mungu i'm here niko hapa i have gone through all over nimesumbuka kila mahali and i'm tired na nimechoka i need you to give me rest na hitaji unipe pumziko guess what nataka uwaze jesus is not like men yesu si kama wanadamu he will do it yeye atasikia why 
Kwa nini? Because he is after your worship. Kwa sababu yeye anataka ibada yako. Oh, what this you know, this conversation is doing is to bring this woman to a level where she can worship Jesus in truth and spirit. And that is the agenda of God for all of us. Mahali hii majadiliano ilikuwa inaelekea ni kuleta huyu mwanamke ili akaweze kuabudu kwa roho na ukweli. Na hapo ndipo sisi wote tunaelekea. Na naweza kukuambia ukweli ili ufike hiyo kiwango ni, kuna, kuna kuna kazi kuna kuna mahali unaweza unafaa kupitia you, you become, yani hautakuwa tu kile Mungu alitamani ukue overnight usiku moja utakipata ukifanya makosa wakati mwingine utakipata wakati mwingine kwa wakati mgumu wewe ka katika uwepo wa Mungu kwa sababu ni kazi angalia huyu mwanamke bila anasema teacher mwalimu she began having a revelation as the conversation continued yani alianza kupata ufunuo wakati maongeo iliendelea teacher and then she, she brought it again to the level of a prophet akasema mwalimu alafu akaipeleka kwa kiwango ya nabii and by the time this conversation will be over na wakati maongeo itaisha and it was a long na ilikuwa maongeo marefu. The longest conversation Jesus had in the Bible is here. Yaani maongeo marefu yenye Yesu alikuwa nao katika Biblia ni hapa. What does it tell you? Inakuambia nini? You don't become who God designed you to become overnight. Wewe hautakuwa kile Mungu aliamua utakuwa kwa usiku mmoja. Tell your neighbor it's a journey. Lakini mwambie mwanzako ni safari. Tell the other neighbor it's a journey. Mwambie mwanzako ni safari. And as you move along the journey na unaposonga katika safari you will get to mountains valleys utapatana na milima na mabonde utapatana na njia ambayo iko na misukotuko utapatana na njia lakini habari njema ni hii you will finally become wewe utakuwa mwisho it's a process you're going through a process yani ni kazi ambayo unafanyishwa when the conversion is done wakati maongeo imeisha the woman caught yule mwanamke alipata what jesus was saying kile yesu alikuwa anasema sio kuhusu mahali ambapo naabudia sio kuhusu mahala but from now lakini kutoka sasa know the vacuum that was left ujue ile pengo ambayo iliachwa it is for you to occupy ni kwako wewe ukaweze kuchukua ile nafasi na wingi the woman said give me that yule mwanamke akasema nipe hiyo and jesus said to her na yesu akamwambia i will give you but go and bring your husband nitakupatia lakini enda ulete mume wako let me tell you something wacha nikwambie kitu go no Mungu anajua chochote kile ambacho umekuwa ukipitia. Mwambie mwanzako anajua kila kitu. So when you come to the presence of God, stop introducing yourself at I'm Kimani Kamau. He already knows you. Kwa hivyo ukikuja mbele za Mungu, wacha kujitambulisha ati mimi ni Kimani Kamau, anakujua. No, ni yule mama analianga. He knows. Eh, ni yule mama analianga mbele zako, anajua. He knows. Anajua. He knows. Anajua. He knows everything. Anajua kila kitu. Look at your neighbor and tell them he knows Angalia jirani yako na umwambie anajua kila kitu kukuhusu. Jesus said to her, you have had five. Yesu akamwambia wewe umekuwa na watano. And now you even have six. Na sasa wewe uko na wasita. How did Jesus know? Kwa Yesu angejua namna gani? Because he knows. Kwa sababu anajua. Jesus knows everything. Yesu anajua kila kitu. He knows that you need to go to school. Ya, anajua inavaa uende shule. He knows that you need school fees. Anajua unahitaji karo ya shule. He is not like Churchill to make fun. Si kama chachi ile ya kuchekesha yeye atapeana He knows that you need a husband Anaita, Anajua unahitaji mume Stop running all over like all the women are going to be taken Wacha kukimbia kila mahali nikana kwamba wanawake wote watachukuliwa Oh you hooking up with all the men Ama wewe unapatana na wanaume wote I love you I love hey, you so much Nakupenda sana James you go to John I love you yeah, I love Koko. you so Johanna nakupenda sana Otieno, I love you Otieno. Otieno nakupenda sana. Wambuka. I'm not sleeping. Stop moving all over. Wacha kuzunguka kila mahali. Stop moving all over. Wacha kuzunguka kila mahali. Tell him never relax. Mwambie mwanzako tulia. He knows what you need. Anajua kile ambacho unahitaji. And very soon he will give it to you. Na hivi karibuni atakupea. Stop moving all over. Wacha kuruka ruka kila mahali. Oh the Bible says the Lord helps those who have helped. Ati unajua Biblia inasema kwamba Mungu anasaidia wale wanasaidiana. I'm using some inter- intellect. Eh yeah. natumia mtandao. You know you have to use your brain. If you come to the presence unajua, of God. Unajua unajua unavaa kutumia mawazo yako. You start yako. using your brains, you lose track with God. Wewe ukianza kutumia mawazo yako, utaachana na Mungu. Because when you come to the presence of God is about faith. Kwa sababu uki 
kuja mbele ya uwepo wa Mungu ni kuhusu imani. When you have faith you're not going to move all over. Ukikuwa na imani hautakuwa unasumbuka kila mahali. You will wait on God to bless you. Utangojea Mungu akubariki. And in due time he will lay a table in the presence of your enemies. Na kwa wakati wake atakutengenezea mesa mbele ya maadui zako. This woman was an enemy in that village. Huyu mwanamke alikuwa adui katika hiyo kijiji. Do you know in the village there are women you cannot walk with? Yaani unajua kwa kijiji kuna wanawake ambao hauwezi tembea na wao. When you see them you change direction. Yaani ukiwaona wanatoka hapa unarudi nyuma. Yeah, we can walk to Tanzania. Hey, no. Me I'm going this way. You could start reversing. <laughs> Unaanza kurudi nyuma because they are fears. Kwa sababu wanaogopa. But I want to tell you one who does not fear what you're going through. Lakini nakwambia yule ambaye haogopi kile unapitia. It's called Jesus. Anaitwa Yesu. He will never fear what you're going through. Hawezi ogopa kile ambacho unapitia. Yeye atakabiliana naye. And make you a man that will command respect. Na akufanya mtu ambaye atakuwa na heshima. Right where you became useless. Mahali ambapo ulikuwa mtu obvious obvious. You can be respected again. Wewe unaweza heshimiwa tena. The woman was transformed. Yule mwanamke alibadilishwa. That's why you need to come to church every Sunday. Don't Yom, miss. Ndio maana unavaa kuja juma kila jumapili kanisa ni Usikose kanisa. Because it's an engagement. Kwa sababu ni mahali ambapo kuna maongeo. Wewe unapatana na Mungu. And as you listen to these words. Na unaposikiza hii neno. It will take you to your destination. Itakupeleka kwa hatima yako. This woman was very good. Huyu mwanamke alikuwa mzuri sana. With convincing men. Na kuweza kushawishi wanaume. So Jesus just speak that. Kwa hivyo Yesu aka akaongea hiyo. And changed it. Na akaibadilisha. And Jesus started using her. Yesu akaanza kumtumia. To bring men to the kingdom uweza kuleta wanaume katika ufalme wa Mungu. And that's what Jesus want to do. Whatever he has put in you, he will use it for the kingdom, not for yourself. Hivyo ndivyo Yesu anataka kufanya. Chochote kile ameweka ndani yako, ataitumia kwa ufalme. Samson was very anointed. Samson alikuwa amepakwa mavuta sana. But he never understood purpose for his anointing. Lakini hakuelewa kusudi ya upako wake. Every time he went to fight, he was Kila fighting for women. Kila wakati alienda kupigana, anapigania wanawake. Alikuwa anapigania wanawake. Jesus wanted this woman to understand the purpose. Yesu alitaka huyu mwanamke aelewe kusudi. And when the disciples were coming back. Na wakati wanafunzi walipokuwa kirudi. When they came back. Wakati walirudi. They found the woman. Walipata ule mwanamke. Was already in her place. Alikuwa katika nafasi yake tayari. May God keep away people who can affect your destiny. May, may they be kept away. Mungu akaweza kukuondolea watu ambao wanaweza adhiri hatima yako. May your enemies come when you have already been blessed. Maadui zako wakuja tayari kama umebarikiwa. May God create an environment of peace. Mungu atengeneze masingara ya amani. As you prepare to connect to your destination. Unapojiandaa kujiunga na hatima yako. This will not have happened if the disciples were still with Jesus. Hii haijafanyika kama wanafunzi wa Yesu wangekuwa na Yesu. Because they didn't believe in women. Kwa sababu hawakuamini wanawake. Men may not believe in you. Eh, wa, wanaume ama wanadamu wanaweza believe in you. Wajomba wako wanaweza kukuamini. Majirani yako wanaweza kukosa kukuamini. Your friends may not believe in you. Na rafiki wako wanaweza kukosa kukuamini. But I'm here to tell you Jesus believes in you. Lakini niko hapa kukuambia Yesu. Can you tell your neighbor you can make it? Mwambie jirani yako you can make it. Utaweza. Tell your neighbor you can make it. Utaweza. Tell the other neighbor you can make it. Mwambie huyo jirani mwingine utaweza. ule mwanamke alikuwa na, a, alisikia ujumbe and she embraced the message of Jesus na akakumbatia ile ujumbe wa Yesu the only gentleman that is suffering yule tu mwanaume ambaye anateseka is the one that she came to fetch water cause hajarudi paka sasa hivi she, she, she dropped ni yule alimwacha kwa nyumba akuje achote maji she dropped the jerrican and left alitupa mtungi na akaenda the guy is still waiting yule jamaa bado anangojea hadi sasa the jerrican and left alitupa mtungi na akaenda zake and the guy
kuja hapa duniani kusindikisha watu. Can you tell you neighbor, I didn't come to escort anyone here. Hapia jirani yako si kuja hapa kusindikisha mtu yeyote. There is no way you can just come on earth. Hakuna vile utakuja duniani. And the only thing will be celebrating his birthday. Yaani ile kitu tu utakuwa unasherekea ni siku ya kuzaliwa. Just birthday. Yaani kuzaliwa tu.